Hello YouTube and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at the Z1000, specifically the rear shock. Lonely Rider is not a professional mechanic and is not responsible for any personal injury or vehicle damage that may result from individuals attempting the repair shown in this video. You have been warned. Try it to your own risk. Let me reach into my box of goodies here. This is the rear shock off of a 2003 to 2004 ZX6R also known as the 636. And this is another common mod that's done to the first gen Z1000. Some people did not like the way the stock shock on the Z1000 handled, so one common modification is to get the shock off of a 2003 or a 2004 ZX6R. And the reason why this particular shock is chosen is because it's a direct fit, no adapters or anything. The bolt patterns are identical. You can literally just swap them out. The main reason people would prefer this shock over that shock is because that shock is kind of more made for kind of street use, whereas obviously the Super Sport shock is meant more for track use. And so people who like to take their Z1000 on the track or do some pretty intense canyon carving or whatever, uh, prefer this shock over the original just because it, it gives you better grip in high-speed turns. This was actually the shock that was on the bike when I bought it from the previous owner, but he also gave me the original shock along with it. I opted to switch back to the original shock, so I took this off and put it back on. The main reason being one, as I've said before, I don't really do track days, so this is really unnecessary, and two, this bike was a three-tone color. It was black, red, and gold, and as you can see, the original shock is colored to match it. It's painted gold, and I don't know if you can see, but the spring is actually a red spring down in there. So the original shock actually fits the color and look of the bike, whereas this one is just this ugly gunmetal gray color, and it was just an eyesore in the back of that thing. So I switched back to the stock one mainly for the looks, but also because, again, I, I don't really need this shock because I don't do track days. And for me, once I adjusted the preload on the rear shock and made it a little stiffer, I actually thought it seems to work fine. But I do know that a lot of people swear up and down about putting this on the bike, saying that it makes a tremendous difference in the turns. So today, I'm gonna show you how to switch the rear shock on your first gen Z1000. For starters, you want to go ahead and lift the bike up with your sport bike stand. Step two, you're going to want to remove these side covers. It's just three screws there, there, and one down there. Go ahead and remove this one and remove the one on the other side. Now, after you take both covers off, you might notice something a little strange. There's a hole in your bike. Perfect. You're gonna wanna find yourself a piece of pipe or a rod or something, something strong and sturdy that can hold a couple hundred pounds. Slide it through there and we're gonna use that to lift the back end of the bike up and take the weight off the swing arm. Now get your trusty handy dandy jack stands out. Now as you can see here, my jack stands don't quite go tall enough, so I gotta get some blocks of wood to put underneath the jack stands to raise them up about an inch or so. So I put some wood underneath the jack stands and as you can see, they are right up against the pipe. So now we're ready to lower the sport bike lift. You should have enough lift that when you're done, your rear wheel will be about an inch and a half, maybe two inches off the ground. The nice thing about utilizing this is that the weight of the gas tank and the engine and the whole front end is on this side. So that's enough weight over here that your front end should stay down while you're working on the back. At this point, it's a good idea to go ahead and put some wheel chucks on your front wheel to keep it from moving. With the bike being raised up by the frame, all of the weight is off the swing arm and the shock is completely decompressed. Once you get the bike to this point, removing the rear shock is actually pretty simple. You have to go ahead and break this bolt loose and then break that bolt loose because you have to remove this pivot point from the dog bones because you need to be able to spin it out of your way so that when you remove the bolt at the top of the shock, you can slide it down from the bottom. This first bolt, this side is a 12 millimeter. The nut on the other side is a 14 millimeter. After you take the nut off of this side, you're gonna notice that the bolt doesn't want to move. That's because there's still weight, there's still stress on that bolt and you don't wanna to try to remove it or you'll damage the threads. And the reason is because although we took the weight of the bike off being on top the swing arm, now that we've lifted the bike up, the weight of the wheel and the swing arm is actually pulling down on the shock. So now we have some weight on it the other direction, but that's easy to fix. All you gotta do, get yourself some, some wood blocks, some shims, just some junk wood you have, and just kind of shim up the rear wheel. Just tap some blocks in to kind of lift it up to take the weight off of that bolt coming down. Now you should be able to pull that bolt right out. 
voila. Now that you've got that bolt free, now you have to take off this bolt right here. This nut on this side and the bolt on the other side are both 17 millimeters. Once you get the nut off, before you push that bolt out this way, pull your kickstand down first so that you can get to it, and then push it out, and then pull it out. And you should have just enough room with your kickstand down that you can slide it out. Now you've got all the bolts out, you can just slide the dog bones out of the way, like that. Spin your pivot point down, and now you just have to take the top bolt off. So there's the bolt you need to get to right there. It's a 12 millimeter. The nut on the other side is a 14 millimeter. Um, you're not going to be able to get to it with a wrench on this side because the regulator rectifier is right in your way. So what I do is I use the 12 millimeter wrench on this side like that and I use the socket wrench on the other side. After you broke it loose, take the nut on this side off first but leave the bolt in it. Now as you can see that bolt in there is a little hard to get to with your hand, you could move the brake reservoir out of the way or maybe unhook this, your uh, rear brake sensor and stuff like that. But honestly, you should be able to just reach in there with like a pair of needle nose pliers, grab a hold of it, hold the shock with your left hand, and while you're holding it, just pull the bolt out with the pliers. You ready? Now just slide the shock down and out from underneath. There it is. Now, as you can see, the Z1000 shock and the ZX6R shock are designed a little differently at the top, but it, don't worry about that. It does fit, I can confirm, because again, this was the one that was on my bike when I bought it, but the bolt patterns are identical. The bolt sizes, the bolt distances, they're identical. So it's a direct swap, no adapters needed, even though the top portion is designed a little differently, it will fit in the bike just fine. There's clearance everywhere. So while we're here doing this, I'll take opportunity of this occasion to talk a little bit about the dog bones. So if you ever heard someone talk about lowering links this is what they're talking about so if you ever had to have a bike lowered an inch or in some cases raised an inch you're actually changing these and in order to raise or lower the bike's height you're actually getting a different set of these that are either longer or shorter and that's what they call lowering links all it does is it changes the set height of this pivot where the shock is bolted to and that raises or lowers the rear end of the bike a little bit so for example this bike when i bought it the previous rider was a taller guy like me and the gen 1 z's had a very low seat height and he actually did not like how low it sat because his knees were bent a lot and it just felt small so he actually did the opposite of what most people do he actually raised the bike an inch in the back um, because he liked it better that way and so when I bought it it was actually raised a little bit I took it and I put it back down to stock height so these are the stock size dog bones but here are the dog bones that he had on the bike and as you can see if I put them up here see there how they're about a half an inch shorter by putting the shorter dog bone on here it actually raises the bike so it's kind of opposite thinking if you shorten the dog bones it raises the rear end if you make the dog bones longer it lowers the rear end of the bike now one thing that sucks for a, a short rider or a new rider who's trying to get their bike to fit them right and they tried lowering it but it was not enough or it was too much is every time you want to change the height you have to buy a new set of these well if you look around online you will find some dog bones that kind of look like this instead of just having two bolt holes they just have one on the one side and then on the other side they'll have a series of holes at different lengths and what that means is that that link is adjustable so you can put it on the bike and put the bolt here and if that's you know too high or too low you can put it here or if not here or and so you buy one set of dog bones that has four or five different possible settings so you can just keep trying it in different spots until you find a spot you like without having to buy four or five sets of these things so if you don't really know where you want your bike to be at you want to kind of play with it get the dog bones that are like these that are adjustable so you have a couple of different settings that you can try that's how you remove the rear shock out of a gen 1 z1000 at this point you could either replace it with another original shock or you could put uh you know a 2003 or a 2004 636 shock on if you wanted to do this uh, ninja shock swap it's really up to you but that's how you remove it so now we're going to go ahead and i'm going to put my original shock back in again kind of get it kind of propped and set up there with your left hand grab it at the bottom get your bolt ready with your pliers with your right hand grab the shock and just kind of lift it up with your left hand lift it back into position get the bolt with your pliers with your right hand and just push the bolt in now go ahead and put the nut back on the other side 
Now go ahead and reassemble everything down here. So first things first, spin your dog bones back around, line them up, and slide your bolts in. Now getting this last bolt in is a little tricky because it probably won't be exactly lined up. So what you might have to do is uh, gradually kind of take some of your shims out from underneath the wheel, kind of lowering it a little bit just to get that uh, just to get that bolt hole to line back up enough that you can get this bolt back in. That's it. Now tighten everything down. Now we're going to go ahead and lift it back up with the sport bike lift, take the jack stands off, take the pipe out, and put the side covers back on, and then we're completely done. Hard, wasn't it? I'm going to call it quits for today's episode. Next episode, I will probably lift the gas tank up and show you how to hook up the power commander on the first-gen Z1000. Till next time, catch you guys later.